Good afternoon. So many of you guys had so many questions about the video that I did this afternoon that I thought that we would do it live with pictures so you can understand how your nerves work, okay? So you have voltage or switch gated channels on your nerves. So if this is a nerve, you send an electrical impulse down a nerve and you have, hang on, Charlie's dumping over the trash. Charlie. So in order for you to do that, if this is the side of one of your nerves, or if this is one of your nerves in your brain, you're sending an electrical impulse down your nerve that's also creating a perpendicular field, okay? So you have ion channels that open and close to change the electrical potential of that nerve. So those ion channels are run on um, literally doors that open and close for calcium, sodium, potassium, chloride, things like that to go in and out. So this picture that I've drawn here is sodium channels, salt, sodium, and A. So if you have a molecule, what I was talking about this morning or the pictures that I posted on Instagram are actually those molecules that look like curly Q ribbons and they have different subunits that affect how they function and, and that tells where it's going to sit in terms of polarity. Does that part of the molecule want to be on the inside of the nerve or does it want to be on the outside of the nerve? Does it, is it attracted to water or is it attracted to fat? That's called hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So if it wants to be on the inside, it's gonna be attracted to fat. If it wants to be on the outside, it's gonna be attracted to water. When you have sodium on the outside of the nerve and you open one of these doors, these are called voltage-gated ion channels, you open one of these doors, the sodium, the, if, the door is cl if the door is closed, you've got a negative potential, so the cell will be, the nerve will be sitting at like minus 70 millivolts. When you open the door, the sodium comes rushing in and you get a rapid increase in the electrical potential. So it could go from, let's say, minus 80 millivolts inside to a positive 30 inside. That is what's creating this impulse to be running down your nerves. You are an electrical being. This is what's happening in every nerve of your body. And then, the, so this, this depicts the door opening. If you guys can see this, this depicts the door opening. And then when the sodium goes through, or if the door closes, it goes back from its potential of plus, or from its trigger from plus 30 to minus 80. So your whole nervous system runs on water and electrolytes. So the things that could be flowing through here could be sodium, potassium, chloride, right? Those are all the different things that could be flowing through. So for example, if you take a calcium channel blocker, you're blocking calcium from being able to get in and do its job. So, Charlie, hold please. You're blocking those ions from going across that membrane to be able to get in and do its job. So does this part make sense? Does everyone, he just, he's knocked over the plant twice in the last half hour. Okay, so does that all make sense? So in a worm, when you give a worm a, a drug that blocks its chloride ion channels, you're doing the same thing. If you take something that blocks your chloride ion channels, the, it's a drug that blocks this channel so that the chloride can't get in, so that, let's say a worm, cannot make this action potential happen so that the worm can't have the electrical impulse. So for a drug like the drug that you all keep asking about, ivermectin, the ivermectin is blocking one of these channels so that the worm can't conduct electrical impulse down its nerves. And for ivermectin, it affects a, a, a worm that causes river blindness and it makes it so that its pharynx can't swallow. 
It literally paralyzes the nerves in its pharynx so that it can't swallow. So all of a human's muscles and all of a human's nerves work on this function. It's called voltage-gated ion channels. Now, ivermectin is a chloride ion channel blocker. In low doses, it will block the, ion, the chloride ion channels of the worm, but not the human being. But in doses that people are currently giving it for what's going on right now, the, the data shows that it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, okay? However, in the doses and the amount of time that it's being given for, it does block potentially cross the blood-brain barrier, meaning it does get into a human nerve. So if you are a human who is predisposed to getting really sick, you've already got mitochondrial dysfunction, what does that mean? That means your neurons already are not working very well, right? That means your nerves, if you've already got mitochondrial dysfunction, you've already got some pre-existing condition that is setting you up to get really sick from this virus, right? Where are your mitochondria the most important in your whole body? Where, give me the, give me the number one spot your mitochondria are the most important in your whole body. Who knows? Where, meaning where do you have the highest density or the most mitochondria per cell? Charlie gave up, yeah, he passed out. He just wanted to be held by his mom. Okay. So where's the number one place, this is off topic, but in the human egg, you have 600,000 mitochondria. Okay, where's the second place your mitochondria are most important? In The egg is number one, not the ovaries, the egg. Number two is the brain, okay? So in your brain, in your brain, you have sequences of these guys or series of them if you were to blow this up now, this is a synapse. Your highest density of mitochondria in your brain is sitting around the edge of these nerves to tell your body to release dopamine, serotonin, GABA, acetylcholine, all of your neurotransmitters so they can swim across and be then genetically recycled back, okay? So this is a blow up of this. This is just a blown up of this. So if you have mitochondrial weakness, you know that this part, the whole nervous part already isn't going well. Now, if you take a, cal a chloride ion channel blocker and you get it in high enough doses, is it going to block the chloride ion channel in your nervous system? Yeah. So if you walk into a virus already mitochondrially weak, and how do you know if you're mitochondrially weak? You're not sleeping, you're tired, you have sleep apnea, you have obesity, you have... Um, any of the risk factors, autoimmune disease, any of the risk factors, you know you've got weak mitochondria. Now you're blocking the electrical potential in your neuron. If you are on something uh, like a calcium channel blocker, that's a double whammy. Now you're taking a drug that blocks your chloride ion channels and you're already taking a calcium channel blocker. If you wind up in an ICU setting because you have an overproduction of inflammatory cytokines. That's why we check inflammatory cytokine genetics with genetic protocol. If you have an overabundance of inflammatory cytokines, which is a whole nother piece of this, right? When you hit that hospital, nobody is coming to save you except the doctors and the nurses who are trying their hardest to save you. If you are predisposed to cytokine storm. And how do you know if you're predisposed to cytokine storm? You have weak mitochondria, you live in a state of constant inflammation, you already have neuroimmune syndrome, neuroinflammatory disease, meaning arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's, any of the risk factors, obesity, sleep apnea, those are all the risk factors. You can be sure when you're in that ICU, there's gonna be a chance that you additionally get a calcium channel blocker. And then there's going to be a chance that you're going to get other drugs, like a good chance you're going to get some whopping doses of lidocaine, because if you wind up in the ICU, you're probably going to have a central monitor put in your, put in your um, you're going to be poked and prodded and be getting lidocaine all the time, which is also going to affect this. So there's multiple drugs that will affect your risk for these problems. 
this is how your nervous system works. So this is why when you enter ketosis and you become water depleted, right? Where carbs go, water flows. So if you're dumping carbohydrates, you're dumping four waters for every carb when you enter ketosis. And when you dump your water, you're dumping potassium, chloride, you basically your electrolytes. So if your nerves run on voltage-gated ion channels in water, the second you hit ketosis, you have to be good at getting the water and getting the electrolytes right. There's so many other things you could do to prepare, to prepare for getting sick. There's so many other things you can do to prepare for getting sick, like ketosis, like sunshine, like high-intensity exercise like getting your water right, like getting your electrolytes right. There's so many other things that you can do to prepare. Choosing to take a drug that potentially in high doses blocks your voltage-gated chloride ion channels so that you can't send an electrical impulse, right? Makes zero sense because the people who are at highest risk for an infection are the people who've already got problems going on in here. There are people who already have weak mitochondria, can't generate enough dopamine and serotonin recycling to heal themselves, to get off the couch. They, they're called lazy, or it says that they lack motivation, when in reality, their nervous system is too inflamed or swollen or puffy. These guys are too far apart. They can't Get an, they can't get enough of their action potentials going. They can't make this whole mechanism work. So this is what I was trying to explain on the mountain. If you fix everything else, which regardless of the fact that we're living through a massive viral illness right now, if we weren't living through this pandemic, you would still have to deal with obesity, sleep apnea, oncoming Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative disease, autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. So if the answer to lower the inflammation is still things like beta-hydroxybutyrate, right? Beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is what turns off the inflammatory reaction in the first place, and all of the light from the sun, right? Why would you put yourself at increased risk of blocking your voltage-gated ion channels if you get to a high enough dose. Now in the literature, you're gonna read the people who defend this say, oh, well, it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. I'm here to tell you, in the studies where people are using it, um, they're getting enough of a dose to cross the blood-brain barrier. And the risk factors are use of other ion channel blocking drugs. Ion channel blocking. If you block these channels, you cannot generate the electrical potential that is your nervous system. So when we talk about you being an electromagnetic field, you emitting an electromagnetic field, think about it. If you're taking this medication, you are stopping your body's ability to generate your electromagnetic field. What is that? Your thoughts, subconscious or conscious, that's your thoughts. That's what you think. The subconscious builds to the conscious level and then you have a thought. So it's going to affect, when I show the picture of the heart and the toroidal field of the heart, your brain has the same thing going on, right? So I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense the way I've presented it. When people don't understand what they're doing, all drugs, the body has to be in homeostasis. All drugs have benefits and all drugs can have harm. The the benefit is in the dose, okay? So everything is dose dependent. There can be benefits to things and there can be harm to things. So like someone said when we first came in here, I didn't know birth control, Cade said, I didn't know birth control pills can deplete zinc. Yes, birth control pills can deplete zinc. So the benefit is they protect you from an unintended, unintended pregnancy. But they deplete zinc, methylfolate, methyl B12, right? They deplete all the things that you need. So there's good things and there's bad things, okay? So as a baseline, learn to clean your cells, learn to practice ketosis, learn to enter autophagy, fix your sleep apnea, use cold plunge if you have sleep apnea, hike your ass off, exercise your fatty acids off, exercise, exercise, exercise. 
Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. Do as I do, not as I say. Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. Every day in every way, I am getting better and better. You have to get up and move. Okay, bye.